of uh, fix all issues right now, and so we are back here ready to bring you some action from round 11 of the regional championships. Yeah, we're going to have a well-known matchup for us, actually. Well, actually, not that well-known matchup, but we are going to have Ryan's Magnuson deck actually exactly the same list as Robert Kindred yesterday. Indeed. And we're part of the same team, also my team. <laughs> exactly. We're going to have uh, Alessandro Mori playing the Broken Sword deck with uh, Gardner in it. Oh, oh, but yeah, so gonna be very broad, make for a very interesting matchup indeed. So uh, yeah, the, the sort of the winning deck from Oshinio against one of the new decks from Ultra Prism. Gonna be really, really good to see. So I believe that we are just about ready to cut to the players right now. They are pretty much all set up and ready to go. So let's cut straight to the action right now. And here they are. So just gonna give them a signal, and we'll be and we will be ready to run. And uh, there it is, there's a handshake, and we are off, ladies and gentlemen. And it looks like Ryan will be starting with a Solgaleo Prism, and uh, Alessandro will be starting with a Gardevoir, and uh, Ryan will be going first. Yeah, so initially this matchup doesn't look too good, but again, if Ryan does not hit the right hand, he the Magnum Lights, Alessandro can hit back with the boost, but since Sora can draw so many cards. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and uh, the um, like with any matchup we've seen with Zorok in the past, just uh, Zorok drawing cards is more often than not good enough to overcome any unfavorability you might have in a matchup otherwise. <laughs> exactly, that's what I'm thinking too. Uh, Alternative's list is just uh, a little bit difficult to read because there are a few Italian cards in here, so... Oh, don't worry, I'm sure I can make sense of this. <laughs> the Evis. Yeah, it's... Um, Oh, actually, maybe I can't make sense of this. Oh, this would be interesting, actually. Um, I think uh, Ibis might be... Oh, actually, that's a, good, that's a good point. Oh, it might be Acerola, actually. Oh, yeah. That, that would make sense. Alright, so... In the Broken Sword deck, uh, usually you don't actually play so, uh, Acerola, but it looks like uh, all Sunder is playing two copies of it. Yeah, uh, well, uh, unless... Uh, I don't know, it might be something else. Uh, maybe it's Mallow? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out I over think the course it's of the Mal game. Yeah, that would make that'll sense. Be more, uh, that would make more sense. Yeah, because uh, in this sort of deck. Yeah, because... Israel is actually quite bad today, so yeah. we'll, when you think about it, but like the matchup I managed must go to Ryan. If he gets a setup, he is probably just going to run Mori over, yeah. uh, to be fair. Yeah, it should be really good from that aspect. And uh, equally, the... So it looks like... Uh, oh, thank you very much. Looks like the chat has actually uh, been... You've been keeping track for, for us whilst uh, the... Uh, Whilst the stream has been, uh, whilst had tech issues, updated on the Elix account, we very much appreciate that. So we're going to update our tracker for you here, so that we're now on, so it'd be 36, 35, 50, 30, 35 out of 50. So, yeah, thank you very much for that, guys. We very much appreciate you helping us keep track of that. 33, actually. 33. Uh, six. 33 out of 50. Okay. Awesome. So there are going to be no max elixirs this time, though. No. So. Only 50 played. So far. <laughs> so, so far, yeah. yeah. Easy, Alessandro starting off. He's gonna go for a top of for Bridget. Um, what he's hoping for next turn is to uh, somehow get a Guzma on to the Immaculite. Because he's gonna see that Ryan has to draw something across, but which actually just eats his Yeah. And, uh, yeah something not gonna get Alessandro, so he's gonna want to fight as many Zoros as possible. And uh, he knows that these, uh, if these rolls end up evolving into guard wars, then they're probably not going to survive for very long. Exactly. And actually, looking at it, guard war, I don't think he's going to evolve into this matchup, to be honest. Maybe one, but he needs to go for it. Like, Galley, it's the only one he can go for, it, honestly, because yeah, it's a good one class attacker. It helps you use two shots. And you see, as we say that Ryan's playing the same list as Robert. He's not bringing any healing cards. So, if he can get a hit on onto the Dustman process, maybe he can run Ryan out of attackers. That's not another question yet. No, and uh, that's probably going to have to be the stretch that he ends up uh, going for if he wants to make sure that he has a shot of winning this game. And uh, we do see indeed, uh, after that Bridget, he's just going to go for the Freeze Aura and put him straight onto the bench. Yes, yeah, quite standard here for Alessandro, especially when he has the two balls out. There's no question about it. He does play the use the Sora in some sense of his deck, since they cannot use the uh, attack ram. Yeah, which uh, sometimes can be relevant, so uh, I guess maybe he just wasn't able to get them over this event or whatever else. But Which is he didn't care. Oh yeah, all that. So, or maybe he, wa maybe he wanted to like bluff his opponent into thinking he's playing, if he started with Lone Zora like that, he could 
make the opponent think playing Zorok Revile instead. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's very dodgy, I realise, but... <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to think of that matter, but... Well, it's under here. He has a uh, safe one free score, so there must have been something going on. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, Ryan just goes ahead and uh, plays an N, as uh, I usually think to mention, as you were saying before, is that it's actually the exact same list uh, that um, Rob was playing yesterday, both uh, both parts of uh, Team Cake, they all uh, worked on this list together, and uh, and it's, although, although Rob didn't end up, wasn't able to win yesterday, he actually said to me after that match that he kind of, he admitted he messed up, kind of, that like, he sort of played himself out of that game, but Ryan was able to make day two of it, and so it'll be good to see if uh, he's able to go even further, he has run his round one, he actually beat Maze round one as well, so it was pretty impressive. Oh, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, actually looking at it, it was... It looked like a kind of bad matchup for Ryan Morehouse last round because he was playing against Gilda Sub of but, well... He won with Timeless GX is what he said. <laughs> yeah, Timeless GX is pretty good, and uh, he plays the true field blower as well, so he can uh, get some turns for it. Yeah. Oh, speaking of uh, Gallade, yes, but you said to mention earlier, there it is, Rack Told you all, Gallade's yeah. the star of the show. Uh, I said, Premonition's good, and if he can get the Goose Mouth this turn, also, under, Ryan's going to be really on the back foot. Yeah, because uh, Ryan was not able to find the rare candy Magda zone off of that end, so that low Magnemite does not look very safe there on the bench, and uh, Alessandro's going to have access to both a premonition and two trades, so he's going to be able to dig very deep yeah, into his deck. Yeah, what I want to see Alessandro do is trade, and then use premonition. Because that digs then further. He gets it, then it digs further, he gets to see seven cards instead of initial five. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see what he does. Ooh, yeah, there, there's one trade. Yes. And now he has a, oh, he got, yeah, but top of it, he doesn't have any bench space. Oh, that's unfortunate. That would have been the out to the Guzma straight away if he was, uh, if he had more bench space left, but he doesn't, so. If he has the cards, though, he can go field blower, plus all the time for field blower, and parallel, see, parallel himself, field blower, and then play top of it. <laughs> I know it sounds like out of the woods right now, but an actual legit play. <laughs> that is. Oh, he had the Guzma already! Oh. No worries then. <laughs> then uh, don't think about Jesper's weird parallel plays. <laughs> yep, and uh, so then after that, he can go for the Prenition. And then tra last trade. Yeah, just well played here by Alessandro. And looks like he found his uh, Giratina promo. I imagine if he's got an Ultra Ball in his hand, he might actually just put that to the top of his deck now just so he can discard it straight away and get it out of his deck. Yeah, also that maybe he can do so he draws his next turn so he can just trade it out. Because I said... As I said, it's the third card, essentially. Yes. So, Giratina is going to be a deck card all day. I'm surprised he doesn't play something like Proliferi, perhaps? Which would also like help in this matchup to use the uh, Meteor Tempest out of the Mushroom. Yeah, yeah, no, that could be pretty funny. But uh, no, it looks like it said uh, just obviously Decay of the Magnemite. Takes his one prize, and now back to Ryan as uh, he's just sitting on this uh, Solgaleo Prism. Now, something that Ryan could do with the Solgaleo already, which is very cool, we've already seen that it's actually a very effective attacker in the in the sense of, uh, well, uh, right, it's a separate attacker with the, the Radiant Star attack. There is a full six Pokemon on Alessandro's side of the field, so yeah, Ryan is able to get enough uh, energy in his discard pile, he can just load up everything. Yeah, but he needs to get the energy out of the discard pile first. Yes, so he does. That, that is a challenge. He's going to put down another Dust Mane across him, which means that he's going to go back to Radiant Star and discard two energies in the set. So, actually, Ryan had to Skyla Magnezone. So, had Alessandro not knocked him out, he, he would have Skyla for Rakeni and had the Magnezone. Yeah, so it was, very, it was a very good. And we're going to see Mon Cornet and Magnemite. So, pretty good for Ryan. He's going to use Radiant Star probably and gets. Something like 3-4 inches of play. Yeah, it's going to be a very decent turn for Ryan, actually. Probably, all things considered, about as good as he could have hoped for. <laughs> you know, sort of Magnemite got knocked out. Exactly, and... Let's see, Ray... Is he an attachment from him, it looks like? And... Yeah, he must use Radiant Star. Uh, I don't see any other way to yeah. do it. Well, something else he can do as well, he can uh, use Mount Coronet, get back to Metal Energy, and then use the Ultra Ball to discard, the, discard them both again. Uh, to get the Magnazone, but then that would tell Alessandro straight away that he has the Magnazone. So at that point, Alessandro would probably end Ryan. So it might be best for Ryan to hold off on it for now. Yeah, exactly. And when you're playing this uh, Sorrow Kick here, and when you have access to permission, your opponent has to think, yeah, he's going to be able to access every copy of card in the deck. Yeah. Because of Malo, yeah. because of permission, because of trade. It's so easy for Alessandro just to get the cards he needs. 
Uh, this, and we see there that Ryan does go for the Radiant Star, actually only being able to attach two energy, but that's still really good, actually. The crazy yeah, as it's, the crazy yeah. as it seems. Did Alessandro do formation last turn? Uh, he did, yeah. Alright, good. So, it'll be interesting to see if Alessandro just, just tries to dig for another Guzma, just to clear the Magnemite again. He needs to. Like, that's the way he wins the matchup, but you see a Dusk being a crossbar. Uh, yeah, Sun Eclipse, and then Meteor Tempest afterwards for prizes, so... He has to keep that in check also, but when he leaves Ryan, like, if he... If he Guzma's out, he does mean a Cosma, he gives Ryan one more turn to, um, to get a Rakeem Magnezone. Yeah, that, that's a, actually a really cool thing that Ryan's done with that Radiant Star. He's essentially created two big threats. He's created both the future sort of set of attacks for it, and then he's also created the threat of something that can just take four prizes, which is not something that Alessandro wants to happen to him. And with that in mind, Alessandro needs to be a bit careful about what his next line of play is here. Exactly, I think. He has got two bottles of time though. Yes. So, what does he go for? I think actually Parallel City in this instance is actually pretty nice. Yes. Yeah, so there he is. Parallel City and Guzma, yeah, that's, that's uh, probably the best player at this if point. If he uh, Parallels. I, I would have liked to use the Guzma before Parallel. Because then, then, hmm. then he could have Guzma the Magnemite. Or Rimmery, and then uh, Parallel. And uh, it's interesting because Ryan actually could have opted to discard Magnemite here. Although I'm not sure. If I would actually think Magnemite discards the right play because Alessandro cannot knock out the uh, Sargalier Prism Star. But he's going to discard the Rimmery. And that's quite interesting because I guess now again that forces Alessandro into considering that decision of, you know, oh, which one do I actually want to pick here? And that's probably why Ryan went for the start of the Remoraid instead of either the Togolay or the Magnemite. But it's like Alessandro is going to take the Magnemite. Yeah. So I think that Ryan is actually in a good position still. Yeah, because I, he can just I know he's behind, but Togolay Radiant Star just. It's like so like Togolay or OGX Sorantis right now. Yeah. Or Radiant Star just. It's like Nitro Tank, tank. but better. <laughs> Nitro tank on pills. Yeah, that's the right. So, yeah, we're gonna see what Ryan does. He has the Hurricane Magnus on again. Well, yeah, yeah, we know we saw it in the last hand, but, but unfortunately, only getting one Magnemite down shows you that you need to get two or more. Yeah, and uh, it looks like on that basis, Ryan might be deciding to. I think if I was Ryan, I'm gonna leave to play enough to make this one. Yeah, I don't think he's ever gonna get Magnus out of this game, but he doesn't need to. Like, one that's main across, I can take four prizes. Radiant Star can charge up. You have free Sorax in the top of the line if we all yeah, also, feel so. Not only that, but so, but even then, is it actually still good for Ryan to get out his Magnemites because that forces uh, it seems to force Alessandro into taking out that threat. So then. Hit, Ryan's actual attackers are safer, so it gives Ryan more time to build up his attackers to actually take those six prizes in succession. Yeah, but I would have liked to see that Ryan did not go for him uh, Magnemite just cross with other GX, because now Alessandro can knock out the Sluggly Prism Star, Magnemite, and Dust Man across me. I, I guess, but, he, but he's going to struggle because, I mean, Sogaleo's HP is uh, quite high, is not is it not? 160. 160, yeah, yeah so a Ryan's beating can't knock that out very easily. So, I think Ryan, I think Alessandro, ra no, rather, yeah, Ryan. I think Ryan's actually fine to do this here, because there, there's the Sun's Eclipse taking the knockout onto the Zoro arc. Ryan is going to just attach another engine next turn and Meteor Tempest, and then that he just does one more Radiant Star and pretty much locks up game from there, surely. Well, not surely. You have still a good late in the mix. Maybe you can actually go for Guard of Arcade this turn? That's actually what he needs. He needs to knock out Guard of War this turn to have a shot in this game. Because if he knocks out Guard of War, Ryan needs Rakane and Magnus on energies to knock out the Gardevoir. If he doesn't get that, Alessandro has a so, huge Gardevoir to knock him out. Yeah. So essentially what you're saying is uh, he needs... To go ham. Yeah, 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 go ham and get double colorless, fairy energy, wreck any Gardevoir choice band. Yes. That's it's, what I'm telling you. It's a big play. Let's see if he can do it. Mallow has like half the cards, so... Possible, and we see Giratina in the end. Super dead. Yeah, but I mean, at least he knows that's going to be the card he discards off the trade straight away. He only has one trade left, though, so if this isn't. If none of these are a Mallow, then that could be a bit of a struggle. You know, we see him count it out. Um, let's see. Ultra Ball for Giratina, my question. So I imagine this is going to be for the Tapu Lilies without Mallow here. 
Yes. Unless, oh, does, is that one in his deck? There's no Mal and Ziggy loses, but he's going to go for the Garden Lord. Probably is for Kenny and Hand, I think. So now and then you just need to dig for the... Choice Band and then Double Chalice. Yeah, and Fairy. Right. So that's the God of War. Oh yeah, that's the right candy. I think I see it there. So. There's going to be... Oh, that's the Fairy in G2. You just need some Mallow. He has so many of the pieces already. I think Alessandro is debating. He has Mal, he has the knockout. Yes, fair enough in hand. So DCE choice band gets the knockout. I don't know why it counts, because he knows. Yeah, he, maybe maybe he's just making sure. And there's one there's double color stuff in his deck as well. And choice band, so yeah, yeah he's gonna go for a knockout, it's gonna get it. And if Ryan can respond next turn, this is getting dangerous. It, it is indeed. Yes, Seeker Spring. So, trade. so it, I think the reason why Alessandro was debating it is because it does mean he play, plays out the rest of his hand essentially. That's yeah, but he gets two cards off the prizes. Yeah, and he has two trades next turn plus yeah. the Premonition Incorporated. Yeah. So did he use Premonition this turn though? I don't. I mm. either had to do like a lot of time before. I don't think he did. No, I don't think he did either. But oh, there it is. Finally, Red Candy Magnazone from Ryan. And it's a letter, and he thinks he's gonna get the knock. I think he's gonna get the knockout here on the God of War. Yeah. And yeah, I would actually like to do it with Corona and back. Yeah, that would be really good to just... Because uh, the Meteor Tempest has to not discard energies. Yeah, that would be really good for him. And then he also, he knows that so there's no way Alessandro can get a return knockout either because there's nothing that can do enough damage. So yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. He's going to go for it. And then next turn, he can do the Radiant Radiant Sun, power up the Dustbin and the Crossbow and just sort of seal the game from there. Yeah, because... Or, or he can even power up Timeless. Timeless Ooh. GX is quite cheeky here, but it's not a good option. I really like that, especially that Alessandro does not have uh, any guard or in play after his turn, so... No. Or probably doesn't. He, he still needs an energy to be fair, but... No. I actually opts not to bench it just yet. Yeah, I'm not sure about this, because if you bench it, you would have one less bad card in some sense of draw in yeah. his deck. Um, this round, I think it's like two discards, he has five energies left, I think, in the deck to draw minus the prize card, so... Four or five energies have been left. And, uh, but he's got letters as well, and Mount Coronet, don't forget. Oh, there oh, it is. Oh, two energies, and Yalga, so... Yeah, he's got it. So... It. So with that, yeah, one goes onto the Sogaleo, and then I imagine he's going to put the other one onto the Dustman and the Crosma. Yeah, I'd imagine that too, because then... You know what, like, if also the, Yeah, ends Ryan. I'm just going to go good for Ryan, that yeah. end. Yeah, this is a really, really brilliant play from Ryan right now. Recognizing the power of you know, getting a knockout with this single prize attacker. Down goes the guard of war. Two more prizes for Ryan, and now Alessandro's really stuck for something to do. I think the game's locked off from here. Yeah. Uh, had Ryan not got the right hand back zone, Alessandro probably won this game, but now he did get it. Uh, I'm just thinking about what he can do. Yeah, I don't think there is much, to be honest. He's. Uh, yeah, just a really, really strong play from him. Like, I see a bad matchup here for Alessandro, so maybe it's his best interest to go for the ultimate tie here. And just what, and just and play this game out as long as possible and hope to win the game too. Exactly. So, uh, I guess that's something you could do. Um, something actually interesting we should note, note is that so uh, much like um, much like Robert as well, Ryan actually was playing the Giratina promo and then cut it last minute for a third professor's letter. So cutting that uh, promo against uh, Greninja for extra consistency, and uh, I think it's paid off. Yeah, I think uh, Alessandro is quite uh, jealous about that, because <laughs> he did not need Bettina. No. Maybe he would have played against one Tina yesterday, but... I, 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 like, Tina's just like, such a card, it's weird. Uh, it's like, well, Greninja has good matches against like most decks in the format, but then they slam one Giratina and oh, it's an auto loss. Yeah, he's just, like, just doing a 40 a turn. <laughs> yeah, either 40, 70, yeah. 90, 110, or 80. It's like, those numbers are not worthy. Yeah, it's not good enough. There's a Tapu Lele from Alessandro. Wonder Tag. Looks like Alessandro is going to grab himself an end. It's probably the best option for him right now. Obviously, there's no extra, there's no draw power card on Ryan's side of the field. I'm not sure. He doesn't really play any. He plays artillery, but obviously the Rem Raid already got KO'd, so we've not, got, we've not been able to get that set up. And yeah, there's the end for Alessandro. Uh, he's got, got it to his hand. 
imagine we'll see him play it. Yeah, there it is. So now it's just going to come down to can Ryan draw enough energy to close out the game? Yeah, he just needs two energies right now. And so drawing the two energy would do it, drawing a professor's letter would do it, drawing a map coronet would do it. He has so many outs. Yeah, there's, I don't think he has enough energies in Discord though, so mark coronet would not work. You could, you could just we see Guzma, something metal, I think. It's, wait, hold on, have I? <laughs> Lotion and trade. There's a field blowout. Oh, that actually helps Ryan. Yeah, it does. He can just have just cut the injury tree. Actually, he shouldn't have played that because it Ooh. actually helps Ryan if he has Mon Coronet. Yeah, he does. Oh. Because then he could just retreat and use Mon Coronet. So, Whoops. oh, not. That was a Nicky no no. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he should have done that. Uh, no, it looks like I, I just don't think. Like, all of a sudden, what consequences of the play, perhaps? No, you just think, oh, field blower, cool, discard the thing, but actually, yeah, it helps Ryan because you can now get energy and discard from Mount Coronet, like you said. Yeah. So, yeah, he's gonna discard. But I don't think he has the yeah. stuff ready, though. Can well, he can go for Gooseman and Radiant Star, actually. He can go for Gooseman and Radiant Star. But, so, again, it still helps Radiant him. Radiant Star would be six energies in play, so. Oof. Be that bad. No. Yeah, we're gonna see the Guzma and Radiant Star. So, we'll play with Ryan here. He, yeah. He looks at his outs and like, yeah, we can do this. And uh, that that and proves exactly what he says. Six energies. God. That so actually Alessandro blurring that float, Zoop blurring that float zone really really helped Ryan that turn. He actually shot himself in the foot to be honest. Yeah. Uh, you see, Ryan's just gonna attach energies like a madman here, and just gonna attach the like, last few energies to Magnuson, perhaps? I, I wouldn't want to see some energies to Magnuson, because Sapkin is not that bad. Yeah. And he actually fulfills the retreat cause Magnuson, so Alessandro can like, stall the turns. Yeah. I think he's just debating whether he wants to give himself the option to attack with the Sogaleo next turn, or whether it just make it make. Whether it just makes more sense to make it so that everything can retreat. And, exactly. And I, I think I, right now, doing the latter makes more sense. Yeah, making it sure that everything can retreat is good since Ryan can. And it looks like, yeah, Ryan agrees. The energy's yeah. gonna go onto the Magnus Oh, maybe not. Maybe one and one, maybe. Yeah. yeah this is still fine, I guess. No matter what, there should be one energy in the Magnus Yeah. I would have liked the two, because Sapkin is not that bad. Uh, and like you said, it can fulfill the retreat. But I don't blame him. The, this puts pressure on Alexander to have to knock out the Sol or else Chrono Impact's just gonna hit him. Yeah. So it's a, it's a it's a marginal decision either way, but uh, yeah, with um, but with Alessandro's situation now, it just does not look that good. And with that in mind, there is going to be a um, another Zorak coming down from from Alessandro, so he's going to be able to do another trade. But what to draw into? Like, there's I don't think there's a lot of stuff to draw into because. No. He needs to attack the lead. He needs to attack the lead, no matter what. Um, but the lead falls to Corona Impact, or even Sap. Not not even Sap. Sap has one hundred and fifty HP. But then it falls to Guzma Ryan. So it's quite complicated for Alessandro here to get his not last few knockouts. Yeah, definitely. So now there's a there's a Guzma. He's actually bringing up the Sogaleo. Yeah, he has to go for a sensitive blade. And then hope that Ryan has no way of getting a goose, but I don't think he has an hand. So, there's that. Draw, what does Ryan get? I don't think he has it. No, he would have slammed it down if he did. We have to see a retreat and Corona Impact, yeah, I think that's what's happening. Yes, Corona Impact, and well, this still means that next turn, Ryan can win off some Coronet stuff, so. Yeah, there's a super And he gets energies in the deck, so, and, and. So okay, so yeah, he's, he's already. He's already setting up himself really well. Yeah. Because if he just draws one energy off, he should be good fine, actually. Yeah. But, I mean, two would be ideal, obviously, because then he can. But he's drawing two cards, let's be fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He has to super free energy back to the deck, though. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how big his deck is, but it should be 50-50 about energies and other cards. Yeah. Let's see what he gets. One, two. No energies. 
So that's your Corona, that tends to be. That's the knockout. And then up goes the Zorak. Now, uh, Sandro needs to find his own Guzma uh, in order to seal out this game, but I don't think he has it from what I've seen. He has got free trades to work with, though, which is uh, not going to be great for Ryan. There's one. There's another one. So there's only two cards left in this deck. Alessandro needs to be sure that there's a Guzma left, otherwise doing this trade could lose him the game. He's going to count it out. He plays three Guzma, I think. Two Guzmas. So he... Oh! How, how many puzzles is he? I think he has one puzzle prized. He has one puzzle prized, then... Well, he has it in hand. Oh, no, he has Pal Pad. Pal Pad. Oh, oh my goodness. He has one trade left, I think, so... Yeah. If those Guzmas, those two Guzmas, hide on the bottom... <laughs> It's gonna lose. Don't. It's gonna win the game. Oh, this is nerve-wracking stuff. And uh, Ryan's gonna gift that four-card deck a really good shuffle. And here comes the third trade. trade. Does he Let's hit see. it? And yes, he yeah. hit it on first card. So yes, Guzma. Cool. Take the K on Dustman across Ben. We will get to the game too. Yeah. yeah. By drawing lots of cards. <laughs> Again. Trade is OP. Yeah. Like, the just, card's broken, yeah. absolutely. But this game also took 25 minutes, so if Ryan wins a game two, I certainly think we're going to go get a tie. Yeah, just um, impressive considering that Ryan obviously didn't have. He didn't have like the fastest start in the world. His feet was magmites just care, but the start was okay. Yeah, but by the end, he was able to stabilize pretty, pretty well. And it we just came down to that turn where Alessandro got the huge KO using the Gardevoir. Yeah, the Gardevoir was really nice. He hit all the cards to do it, but his Malo Sora combo just lets you do it, basically. Yeah, exactly. So. Now they're going to be setting up for game two, and uh, Ryan is going to be going first, so that's going to be an advance for him. It means that he has one turn guaranteed of safe Magnemite, so he can you know, try and get his Magnezone out, which uh, would be nice for him. And I imagine he'll be wanting to try and uh, just set up that Magnezone as quickly as possible and to try and win really quickly so that we can avoid this situation, like you just said. You're going to see about that. It depends on how fast Star gets and how slow Star gets. Yeah, of course. Because definitely this Star variant is one of the slower Star variants, even though Star is always fast. Because uh, he's playing the stage 2 variant. And uh, maybe he gets a bit of a clunky start with dudes where Candy's in hand and Gardevoir's in hand. So we're going to figure it out. So there you go. Both players are almost ready to get ready into get ready going into this game too. And there's the cuts. It's like Ryan, is he going to be able to look? Oh, his hand is full of Pokemon, look at that! Oh, yeah. He doesn't even need Brick. Oh, my goodness, he has Rakanian Magnusone from the start. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. He's actually debating whether starting with Solgaleo actually makes no sense. I think he's realizing no, it doesn't, because you want that as sort of. If you've got as good a setup hand as you do uh, in the case of Ryan there, you want to have. You want to make it so that the. Oh, even oh. Ultra Balls, more Pokemon sources, but yeah, he has Magnusone. So, so strong. Like, honestly, I would just pass you right now. And it shows. It just shows us you have nothing. It, that's exactly what he does. And it shows. It, like, the way he has it, just looks like. God, I don't have anything. No, no, that's. But in, in reality, Ryan is nuts. Yeah. No, that was really, really clever from Ryan there. Just, uh, you know, not reading too much in the body language either. Just, like, you know, a little bit of a. So I just. Oh, I've a couple of Pokemon pass, I guess. But then. You, and then. And he knows his hand to save as well, because Alessandro's just played a bridge. It's the next turn. Ryan is going to have Next a turn, we're going to see the hands. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if he gets three energies on the after the top of late and supporter, he's going to claw slash this lost of town. Yeah, and that's not going to be a fun time for Alessandro. <laughs> there is, uh, there's the free Zoro is going down. Wow. And uh, is there going to be an energy attachment as well? And no, just a pass. And here we go. Guys, Vercani Magdaso. Yeah. Ultra oh. Ball. Oh my goodness. You've got it all, folks. I think he's going to get a second dust mini cross at some point. Yeah, probably. Times yeah. GX is not a good matchup. 
At least not right now. I mean, yeah, but he's gonna do the initial search like Joe Bernard did. Um, just search out and get some memory. Yeah. So he's got everything, folks. So there's that Tapalele. Oh, well. Tapalele for Sycamore. And it's a shame we can't see Alessandro's facial expression right now. It's like, imagine he'd be just looking at that, thinking, "What? <laughs> Mamma mia!" <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna see Tapalele. He's just gonna do another search to check what's prize grabs, and then uh, surely Sycamore's gonna come out. Yeah, which it does. Oh, really, really, really strong. And actually, speaking of, we saw yesterday that some Star variants were switching out the Professor Sycamores and playing perhaps more Cynthia stuff. Well, there's one Professor Sycamore in uh, his deck right yeah, now, so it's kind of similar. So, to so from a Sydney list, he caught one Sycamore, one end for Cynthia and Palma. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> kind of hurts his early game, but like later game, he gets more supporters. And with this Sword Garbar deck, you need Guzma's late game, which is not a guarantee. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Also, um, I just worked out, so this one, that's Red Candy, and, that, and that's Mallow. So those are the two Italian yeah, cards on this. And uh, Potione Max is also Max Potion, in, ca in, case, in case that wasn't, you know. <laughs> I think I'd see that. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think you should support him online. Too much place for all, so perhaps he didn't have much time to test because City was only illegal. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Um, now, uh, Alessandro draws into a Mew from that trade, it looks like. Obviously, not a great card in this matchup considering the uh, Dust Man the Cosmo has psychic resistance and snacks it out of first. Yeah, <laughs> so he's like, Yeah, you hit me. Oh, go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's an ultra roll. Discarding that Mew, which as we just mentioned isn't that useful. And uh, now Alessandro is going to find himself a uh, third Zorark. So he knows that last game he was able to win off of the back of you know, just doing trade turn after turn after turn. So he's going to try and make sure that that carries on essentially. And exactly. they can draw all the cards he needs to find, make it more likely for him to find his outs. There's a trade for a fairy energy. There's a Guzma there too, but I actually don't see a double colours, so uh, Alessandro can't even get, you know, an initial attack in to something, soften something up, which is quite unfortunate. I see the Guzma, Guzma just hard targeting this Magnezone. They lay up. But it's just a pass. Oh, it doesn't even tag, so... Yeah, it does not look good at all. No. See, but Ryan... He does not... He plays one foot, so we should get Skylar for him. Yeah, so that's uh, hopefully for him if he's not prized, then he'll be able to do that. If not, he can he can just also get Professor Letter or Mount Coronet to get two energy. That's also another option. Exactly. And I don't know, it doesn't look like he has access to the float stone considering he's oh no there it is, so he's just looking at the rest of his deck just to make sure. And uh, there is Professor's Letter as well, so he's got the knockout. Need your tempest, guys. He's going to grab the knockout here, and I think Ryan's going to take this game in the yeah. end. Yeah, I think that he's going to take such a commanding lead at this point. You've got Magnus now on turn two. I mean, we saw, he had that nuts turn two where he basically got everything he needed. And so that's uh, going to make it so that Ryan's going to have a very hard time uh, falling back in this game. He'd have to, you know, I'll decide to pull something amazing in order to make a comeback here. See there. I'd actually like to attach more energy to Dustman and Cosmic because he says discard your energy. So yes, he does that. Very, very clever. And he's also taken out the there as well, so he, that doesn't attach more energy, doesn't threaten him either. So it's actually really, really clever to do that. And there it is. Meets his Tempest, discarding the free metals and uh, taking two more of his prizes. Yeah, because you know he's going to he's gonna at some point get an extra Dustman and Cosmic. He needs it. But now he has a KO next turn, no matter what, because... I don't think anything is going to survive Meteor Tempest from Alessandro Mara's side. No, no, definitely not. There's a two puzzles of time. You have to get like a, a Rolks and a Tapu Lele. Not the most, not the really ideal things you want to be... Not the most luxurious targets you can have, perhaps. No. There are other things you'd rather puzzle for, but uh, Alessandro forces into the situation. And there goes another trade. But anything useful from that? Does it seem like it? And so now Dan is wondering what sort of where to take his line to play next, so he just decides to play the end. Yeah, playing the end is not that bad. It's gonna limit Ryan a bit, and if he's lucky, 
Well, it's not going to be energy, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, no, I don't think There's so many outs so energy. Yeah. I'm doing four cards with the top deck. I have no idea. So just going to... Judge can just take the discard pile, I don't know why. We're gonna see, is that card strong? Yeah, he's drawing 600 to send here. There's a double colorless for him finally. And then an ultra ball, gonna be discarding a second one and an advanced hammer. Yeah, I don't think he has him to be back in this matchup. No, definitely not. <laughs> Actually, yesterday I saw some straight Gardevoir decks, which is a Sylveon. Or either uh, that or Vulpix playing the new. Uh, Super boost energy. Super boost energy, yeah. <laughs> bold. <laughs> that is bold. And if you get a couple of stage 2s in the play, 4 energy in the bottom war? In one attachment? That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. I don't think he has a word for it. <laughs> no. you, have to, you have to get 3 stage 2s in the play, play as well, don't you? So don't use just 2. Yeah, it's 3 stage 2s. Yeah, we said it. If you've got 3 stage 2s set up, you probably won the game anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's just a win harder card. Yeah. It, it's fun though. Um, yeah, We're so gonna see the attachment. So Meteor Tempest gonna take the knockout. We just need to see another Dustman and Crossman out of Ryan Warhouse. If he gets Mount Cornet, Dustman and Crossman, it's gonna be nearly already charged up. See Mount Cornet, Dialga. Yeah, you could even do that because then he could just set up the game, say to the point where yeah, just, timeless and shred. Yeah, just uh, well, it's just guaranteed. So the yeah, win. I would actually go for uh, Dialga versus Ryan and see Mount Cornet. Use it. Get back to energy. Is he going to put them on the I'm not sure. He's going to put them on Sogaleo, it looks like. I don't think he sees it's, it's also fine, uh, I guess. It's just uh, in a good back of attacker. Maybe. Uh, oh, oh, Alessandro's going to concede. Because, yeah, he knows that there's too many attackers on Waterloo to deal with right now. And uh, I think maybe Alessandro is thinking he could. Um, wait, is that. Are they, are they going to tie? Like they might be agreeing to ID already. I'm not sure. No, 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 they're just notched off the game. I don't think they're ever going to be in position to tie. Strange. So. So there's some. Um, Gosh, I know, it's very weird. So, uh, I don't know, I don't quite, don't know quite, I don't know quite why they were showing the. It was, it was because they were just notching out the game. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we're gonna go into the game 1 1 here. Uh, I think that if everything goes right, Rank still wins this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I think it's in Alessandro's best interest to take a tie in this match. Well, it looks like it's definitely going to be possible considering how... I mean, there's only 13 minutes left on the clock. Uh, Ryan or Alessandro have to pull off a very quick win in order to make this not a tie. But, I mean, it's not impossible. So we're going to figure out, but the, the little twist on the tail here is uh, the three plus three turns. Because two turns in many, many, many instances can take two prizes. Up to, like, three, four prizes even, so... And, and something else to consider, actually. Dialga. <laughs> oh, yes. Timeless GX could... Could actually rob oh, yes, I off a turn at the time. Because when you use Timeless GX and you give yourself a turn, you can actually switch some of the turns to the plus yeah. three. So, you, so, so instead like, of the plus three, I was also only going to get one turn. Yeah, because essentially it's treated as an extra turn event that time. So say if you're turn one of time and you've timeless, then you also take, take turn two of time, and then and then your opponent takes turn three and then the game finishes. It's an ultimate tie attack. Yeah, 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 basically. Or the ultimate steal the win from a tie attack, potentially. Well. Oh, okay, it'd be that too, but in this is where I'm just thinking like, well, if also there's four ahead and... Ryan's was like, yeah, who's my timeless? Oh, I'm, I'm turning two, you're turning three. Oh, you can't win. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wah, wah. We're going to ask Ryan if that ever happened, because that would be super funny. I'm, I'm sure it will happen at some point whilst the Alga is a tournament legal card. Now, there's a Bridget from Alessandro. Really strong start there with two rolls and three Zora. A DCE on a Zora on the bench, and then just a pass. Great now. start, usually. But we're going to see Skyla. Rakane's going to get him out, I think. 
He doesn't want to go for it straight away though, he's going second, so if he skylights for candy, Alessandro's probably just going to end yeah, him. Yeah, he's going second. It just looks so much like he went first, right? Yeah, uh, it does. Yeah, he's going to skylight. It's a great that he has two Magnemite out already because obviously it means that Alessandro can't threaten uh, taking away that uh, stuff up Pokemon by just goosmering a Magnemite and KO again. Exactly, I think that too, and we see what Ryan does. Gonna oh, oh just got a second one. For a second one. Fair enough. So the dream would it be that he has Bikini to Max over next turn and that then uh, he plays Sigma I don't know if he has Bikini Max or not. No, I don't know either. It would be interesting to see as well if he actually benches the Dialga before playing that second one next turn, assuming he doesn't get end, which might which he might well do considering Alessandro knows that he has a second one in hand. Exactly, and I think that Ryan actually wants to bench Dialga now. That is for him. And Stylus GX is a secure two prizes. Ryan disagrees though, apparently. There's a, there's a Zorok. So. Um, there's a, a British being traded away, and that doesn't an ultra ball. Uh, just starting an N and a very NG, so that he'll be able to get a second star off of that. Or he could just decide to go for Tackle Lele, which is actually what he does, and that just play the Guzma, uh, bringing up one of the Magnemite just to get rid of it, and then subsequently also bring in the Zorak. Yeah, I think he has active. to go for the pure question here. Like, yeah. There is none other play for Alessandro available. Because he needs to take out those Magnemites. Because you see, if Ryan has a Magnus going, Alessandro gets run over by it. Yeah, yeah, it's, I think a very bad time. Uh, there, yeah, there is the Guzma. Bringing out the Magnemite, up comes Zorok, and then just uh, Ryan's beating, knocking it out. And uh, in return, there goes uh, that Ultra Ball. He's going to find himself. He actually I think we're going to see Rakani. I think he has Rakani. I think he has it. He yes! Does. So. By Dialga, I'm sorry, no time was DX in that against, but. I guess, I guess Ryan's just thinking, just, I'm just gonna. Minutes, nine minutes left? Yeah, no, nine minutes left, but I'm guessing, he, I guess he's just thinking I can just take three quick knockouts and win, like, which is fair enough to be honest. Yeah, he just needs free energy off the Sigmore, so, one. Only one. One. Oh dear. Even if, he, even if he's got two, he could at least do Sun's Eclipse because uh, Alessandro has yeah. taken a prize, but oh, that is not. That's not good. Not good at all. So it's said he just passes. Pass. Oh. That, that is an unfortunate turn of events. Now, the same aggressive Ryan is that obviously the Magma Zone was able to get into play, so there's no fear of it being you know, knocked out this turn unless Alessandro is able to do some crazy play where you know, he gets a bunch of energy on a Gardevoir and Guzmas, but actually, I think he can't even get enough energy in play in one turn to do that. Exactly. It's, it's, it's interesting which route the Alessandro takes. Because I think ideally, probably, like these early turns for Gardevoir takes like two minutes. So ideally, I just think that Alessandro wants to run the clock out. Uh, he, he actually just decides to do Ryan's beating without doing much else, so... Yeah, so we're going to see Ryan probably going to go for another Dustman and Cosmo, I think. Yeah. He needs a second attacker. And... Um, so for it. Like, remember it's also legit here, because, like, he needs to draw some cards and stuff. He does, but I guess that's why he wants to prioritize. Actually going to go for the Sogaleo. Sogaleo, Prism Star, I'll take that back, but... Yeah. In case Gardevoir comes out, so I know Prison Star is not that bad. No, so uh, I think it's an absolutely fine play to put that down as well. And uh, going to go quickly for the second one up in there as well. And uh, now he need, really needs to find the energy. Yeah, so he has one energy in hand, and now he needs two. He's going to play card and energy, the second one. Yeah. He even has choice points. Actually, he has no engine to stop out, so he may as well just stick him all first, I guess. And, uh, uh, yeah, he got a letter, it's last card. So, oh, he got Remory too, so actually that was really, really strong. And now we could consider going for Sun's Eclipse. It would mean that he doesn't have access to Sun's Eclipse later on. But, uh, which is something, he does play one Super Rod, so he does still have access to it for now if he works uh, to I'd like him to use Meteor Tempest, because he has Karn in play. Of course, Field Blow can hit or parallel, but... I think he wants to keep his GX attack. Yeah, that makes sense. There's the map corner getting back to one energy as well. And it uh, looks like that's uh, all going to yeah, be going. Awesome. Uh, uh, actually, no, he's going to go for Sun's Eclipse, it looks like. Yeah, yes. 
I guess he's just thinking he just doesn't want to timeless. He doesn't have enough time to timeless. Uh huh. <laughs> No, that was not intentional. <laughs> that was intentional. Like, we all know that. But you're just going to try and charge up the slug over the strike, looks like. I'm really debating it. I'm actually not sure. I think he's maybe considering if he does want to do me to Tempest after all. But no, yeah, Sun's Eclipse it we is. We can just keep it and wait for the next turn if you like us to dust me in a cross map. Yeah, this makes sense too. And uh, now Alessandro brings up his aura, draws a card. And what does he, where does he go from here? So all he needs is a Zoro Arc and a double colorless to get him knock out on this. Uh, so I'll go on this, I'm sorry, I'll just dust me in the Cosmo because it has been softened up so much. Yeah. But there, there is an ultimate. I would like to see an energy on the top of Lily though. So if he drew a dust me in the Cosmo next turn after this current gets knocked out, he could retreat the Lily. That's true, although he, uh, assuming that Alessandro doesn't end, he can still do that with the energy he has in hand. Yeah. And it might be that Ryan is just committing at this point to going for a Radiant Sun next turn. Either way, there is. Yeah, but then he's going to be in fear of running out the clock, honestly. Because Radiant Star is quite slow attack, you know. Yeah, so it's, in fact, it's in fact where you're not doing damage, so obviously it's never going to get, never going to get you prize cards. There is... Um, but there's an end from uh, Alessandro's side as well. Yeah, and Alessandro has to find out the desperate place now and try to limit all Ryan's options. I actually like... I'm not sure what I actually like in this situation because this seems too tough for Alessandro. Well, Alessandro needs to see quite a bit here. Well, I say quite a bit. He needs to see a double colors in Zorak. But, and there's no trades on board for him either, so he needs to see Zorak of this fight at least. Uh, Evo I, see, Soda. I see an Evo Soda. But I don't see the double colors yet, so yeah, there is going to go to Evo Soda. And he needs to see a double colors for these two cards. Can he do it? Oh, he already has it. Okay, never mind. Alrighty, so trade's gonna come in, discard the Ralts. And there's another Zorak too. So actually, a really, really strong turn from Alessandro discarding the bridge off the second trade. And uh, he's got pretty much everything he needs good to go ready for next turn. So now we're just, we're just gonna see a right beating. That will knock out the Dustman Necrozma. And uh, now that's uh, Alessandro's gonna take two prizes. And Ryan is goes to bring up the tap there, yeah, so he's, he's, oh, he's got one energy in hand already, so he's uh, pretty much good to go. There's uh, Mount Coronet as well, going to get back to get back those two energy. And, uh, oh, it's all going to solve Leo. Does he have Guzman in hand? He's have Guzman in hand to do this play, and he, he does. He does, so Corona Impact. Yeah, indeed, going to be going for the Corona and Impact. Yes, he touched the top of it, I really like that. Yeah, I like that too. Uh, if he gets in. Yeah, so that, that way I think has Alessandro kind of has to. Yeah, so there it is. Current impacts, taking knockouts, getting what looks like an energy and something else like his prizes. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes, but I agree completely. Now that he has the energy on the Tapu Lele, he needs to invest less into why well, he can just promote that next turn and then go for the Dustman, the Cosma. Uh, In case something goes wrong with the God of War. Which could very well happen as Alessandro. Which has to happen. Yeah. Garver and it's what Alessandro wants, but I think he needs a Mal for it perhaps. It's tricky no matter which way you look at it. So there's the Ultra Ball starting of course the Giratina promo and the and the Zorak GX. And we might see I think we're gonna see Ryan be able to claw this back. Yeah, I think so too. Um ooh, potential danger zone though. There is the God of War ready to go in Alessandro's hand with the Ultra Ball. Yeah, so. but honestly that just means that Ryan can just needs four energies to knock out a guard over Sapkin. Oh, yeah, the Magnum Magna zone. That'll be a 260 on a guard away. I don't think Gardo can deal with that. I uh, no, I, I think you're right, Jesper. So so let's see if that's actually what ends up happening. Let's see. Uh, Rare Candy Guard War. Yeah, there's a fair engine in hand as well, so that will be enough to get the knockout already because the be six engine between the two. Seven now. Yeah. The Guzma. No, he's oh, trading. Oh, trade. Of course he's going to Guzma here. Oh, no end though. That's bad. It's really bad. Well, you can try and dig for it now. No. no. Oh, oh, wait, he has, he has two puzzles. He has double puzzles. Okay, so. so he can get the end off this. Let's see what he wants the most though. Like, all of a sudden I was just wishing that Hex Mainnet was important. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Hex Mainnet chaining would have been sick here. Yeah. 
that, that's how that's how you win against decks like these usually well, back in the day, but it's uh, not an option that's important to them now. No, unfortunately not. And it looks like actually Engelade is going to be his two yeah, target yeah, choices. Maybe he has another Rakini hand, so double puzzle Rakini get late ends. Yeah. Strong play. And going to take those. By taking Engelade, he shows he has Rakini, so... Field blower, that's huge! Pretty big. That means that uh, Zap Cannon that kind of won't be doing enough now. He's going to go all in on a guard or play, and he can actually win this all zone go. Yeah, yeah, definitely can. So he just needs to go to the next turn. What Ryan needs, Mount Corner, the cross map, two energies. Yeah. Sim simple as that. Because Zap Cannon does 100, right, without the choice pattern, on ba as a base damage. Or is that... Which? The Zap Cannon does... 130. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, close zone on the Magnus Zone, so, so he still... So no, he still wins off of get, getting... Uh, he doesn't need the Decimate the Crossbow to win, then he still just needs yeah, four energies. Yeah, just four energies, yeah. yeah. That's why I was confused, because you were saying that. Oh, it has an Ultra Ball. Yeah, and I think Ryan... How many... There's like two top Lele, so... I think he discarded the first one. So he can just go for Artillery, right? Yes. Assuming he's not prized. I don't think he's prized. No, Because so, uh, otherwise he wouldn't put it down. He has two prizes left, so the chance of hit being prized... Pretty low. Very low. And it uh, looks like time will be called soon. Well, I mean, we've got the counter here. Um, there is... I think time is called... Our counter might be a few seconds behind. Okay. So... But here we go. Zero on the clock. Yeah, so there's a power pad from Alessandro as well. Shuffling back into Guzma. And it's all going to come down to this turn. We know Ryan has the ultra ball. We know he has means of digging for an out. Can he find the energy he needs to win the game? We're going to see if Alessandro gets a turn next turn and gets Guzma. He wins. Yes, sim simple as that. No, but it doesn't even Guzma. Guzma, he only has one prize left. Oh no, of course, he's taking out a single prize attacker, so uh, yeah, he wouldn't need the Guzma because you've got to assume that Ryan will bring up a single prize attacker. Turn one. That's the ultra ball. Ultra ball. Go we know, artillery. We know what he's doing. There it is. He has Mount Cornets in deck. He has energies in deck, so we just need. To see four energies. So, yeah, a source of four energies, like left circle plus coronet, two energies plus coronet, so maybe another supporter, some kind of combination of those things will do it. It all comes down to this. There's the cut. Does Ryan see the energy he needs of this artillery? Uh, abyssal hand, one, two, three, four, oh. five. There oh, it is! Oh, my coronet letter! Oh! Is there an event That is it! There? That's it! Yeah. Yes, there is. So, Zap Ryan. Cannon for 260 damage. Takes up the Guard of War, takes game three, and takes the match. Wow. It was so close in the end, though, because Ryan just whiffed under the map, Dark and Tusk me in the cross in the beginning. And you see, ended up close anyways. Yeah, absolutely. That's just the power of Sorg <laughs> with Guard of War. <laughs> Yeah. Broken Zorg. It is, but what, not broken enough to beat Magnazone apparently. No, so. unfortunately not, but you did see the power of the deck Tor used to win the Oceania International Championships. Yes, yes, Within a lot of top 32s. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you see that this Suspect Cross deck is so powerful. We just hit the Red Canyon map, so we just hit a few issues along the way. Be fine. Yeah, absolutely. And Ryan was able to build the hands consistently, so I was able to set up fairly well, even if you know both those times in Italy got turned to Magnazo, he won. So it's funny how that works, isn't it? Exactly. And I speaking of Ryan, we're gonna have an interview with him in a short bit, so we'll turn over that and we'll see you in a bit. Don't go anywhere.
Hello everyone, welcome to the Winners of Two. I'm here with Ryan Morehouse. Hi, nice. just uh, managed to, to win the win uh, uh, round 11. Yeah, yeah how really you, close. How are you feeling? Really happy, that was such a good game. We had like three really close games, which was nice. Yeah, it's, it's always nice when the series plays out properly like that, where it's nice and back and forth. And, yeah. uh, you must have been pretty good, especially because um, you started at 30 of seed today, didn't you? Yeah, I was. But, but you've already won two. So yeah, which is, I need to win two more like to definitely game, which the, is really nice. The climbing way up the ranks, though, that's a sort of story we love to see. So we mentioned this a little bit about this, how um, actually this is uh, the, the, the Team Cake deck, or yeah. one of the Team Cake decks for the weekend. Uh, so you and Rob are playing it. Adam Hawkins, he's also made top day two. He's not playing this, though. But what made you decide to go to this deck? So me and my friend Dan started testing, and we weren't really sure what to play. We started with Guard of War. I was like, eh, we probably should go off that. We wasn't feeling too good about it. We didn't know Tor's list yet, so we just decided we'll try something new. So we gave this a try and just made the Crossman with Magnezone. It's insane when you get like the turn two Magnezone. So we decided to give it like a full blown try. We did a bunch of testing, changed some things. We were like, the one one t thing we might have changed maybe like Giratina, but there wasn't any Greninja, so it was correct. Sword of Layer Star against any sort of Garbodor stuff is, in, is amazing. It just really helps out. And then like it's if, if you can get a Magnezone on turn two, usually you're in a good spot. Yeah, yeah. That, we noticed that both the games where you got a turn two Magnezone, you won the game in the end. That's kind of how it worked. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm really glad you brought up the Sword of Layer Prism Star because I don't know about you, but I feel like this card is one of the most actually underrated, insane yeah, cards in the whole set. I had a turn where I got like six energy, which is really insane. Like six yeah. energy just on the field without Magnezone, so I couldn't get it out, which really that like helped out to be able to get to stay in that game. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, even though you didn't you didn't win that game in the end, the game was ridiculously close. Yeah. Because Super close. That. If yeah. I'd been able to hit two energy off that end, I might have been able to. I would have just been able to um, the cross move yeah. at the end. It's, it's actually interesting to the point where um, uh, Mehdi Hafi, who I believe is in day two as well, or yeah. is, no, no, Hedy is in day two. But Mehdi is a well-known French player who's uh, had lots of good results. Mm. And he's saying he put up a tweet saying with like Solgaleo Star and Magnazone, yeah. and he said best card in the new set plus worst card in the new set, <laughs> which was really interesting. I'm not quite sure, sure what he meant by that. I guess he's trying to say that he feels like this card is really good mm. and that the Dust Mane is really good, but yeah. Magnazone isn't necessarily the right partner. But Magnazone, it's, it's interesting. Interesting. Like the deck feels like a Tapu Bulu GX, like with Vika Vault deck. But yeah, I mean it is basically. It basically is, but then you have this added addition of Sword of Layer Star, which like makes it so that if you do go against Garbu, you don't get the Magnezone. Zone. Even though you have a couple of deck cards, you, have, you can just chuck an energy on with Sword of Layer Star. Yeah. And because we play three Professor's Light, you can Ultra Pole these away, and then yeah. sometimes you can get like a turn one Sword of Layer, um, its first attack to put energy on and still be powered up for turn two. Yeah, cool. So we're running a little bit short of time, so just one last question I want to ask you. Is there anything you really don't want to see in the next few rounds? Just uh, the stuff, I guess. I don't really like the Weavile stuff. I have played against the uh, Schultz players and never played with all um, Zoroark and I tied with uh, Philip and lost to um, Robin and that that's a hard matchup. Yeah, lots of abilities. Lots of abilities. I'd love to change one of the Magnemites now to a um, <laughs> what we call a happy Magnemite just because it has like yeah, no, it has no, a no, different no. attack but isn't and it doesn't have any abilities. Yeah. So that'd be nice. But other than that, I'm quite happy. Gab's a bit iffy, but... Yeah, but it's doable, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, listen, best of luck for the rest of your round. Thank, thank, you, thank, thank you very you. much. And guys, we're going to be back very soon with the next action from round 12. Don't go anywhere.